Whilst I'm all wet from doing that earlier experiment, I just want to do a little story about Land Rover doors and Land Rover door seals. <clears throat> now, this is a Land Rover from Spain, and as far as I know, it's never been touched. Uh, the bottom hinge is a bit saggy, which would explain why the gap here is not the same as the gap here. It wants, you know, it just wants adjusting a little bit. It's probably moved over the years. But I'm going to tell you how to fit a Land Rover door basically in another video to get the gaps right and things. Because they were sort of hit and miss. But if you do it right once, you'll, you'll never get a problem. Basically, these are things. This corner here has to be the same height. You know, like this one up. This is why this one's dropped down just ever so slightly. But it won't change my video I'm telling you about Land Rover sales. Um, pretty much flush right down to the bottom. It's on the latch, it's sticking out a bit, it could do with going in a bit. At the top of the door, we've got uh, a situation whereas uh, this bit is, is just sticking, this is in a little bit, which isn't a big problem. So if we pull it out, just ever so slightly, it's nice and flush. And that's where it wants to be. And the same at the front, you know, you pull it out a little bit as if it's compressing the seal, it's nice and flush. So I'm just going to fit, uh, I've got hold of a, a brand new door seal and I want to sh just quickly fit this and then I'll come back to tell you. Now the reason why you fit the, you fit the door before the seal, which makes life a lot interesting for us, is that we can then set the latch so we know that this is nice and flush, so all the body is nice and flush, but we have a problem. Now at the same time, Whilst the door seal is off, I can show you. This is why you put some dum-dum in these corners. You know, you, you've got to seal off these corners because water will come down here and it looks like the foam seal over the years has eroded. So we're just going to pack that up with dum-dum because water will come down the gutter and, and run down here, run into the car, and then it'll find its way to here and drip on the mat. And you can see what they do. They put actually some sticky tape over the dum-dum so it doesn't stick to the seal and it's the same at the top there see all this this is all dum-dum it's, it's that's what they used to use you see dum-dum in there and a little bit of tape dum-dum tape dum-dum tape almost like making a musical there one thing i want to say to you before i go in, uh, uh, really into put fitness door seal whilst we're looking at this bit is if you, if you understand the history of Land Rover doors, uh, then it, you'll probably understand their dilemma, Land Rover's dilemma. See, on the Series 1, you can stand back a bit, this panel here was straight, the doors were straight. So they used to use just a, 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 like a, a, a flat seal with a metal insert and then it was riveted all along here. Which was fine, but well, the only thing was, it came in six pieces, so there was one, two, three, four, five, and six pieces. Now if you had 50 rivets holding that on each side, that's 100 rivets to put in a door, that's an awful lot of work. So if you fast forward to series two, when this shape came out, and they did this shape so it was a little bit wider in, inside the car. But what they did was they used the same Series 1 type seal, but they, they actually moulded this piece. And it was a lip that came out like this, but they actually moulded it in so that it fitted really nice. So that was good. Fast forward to Defender seals, and they came up with this, this type of idea. Now that is a cross section of what it looks like. It's a sponge. It's, it's not rubber, it's like a sponge rubber. Um, and it clips on. Uh, you can see the little teeth here, and you can see the little insert inside. It, there's metal inside these teeth here that grab onto the, f to the to the framework here. These seals have also got holes in them, so that when they compress, uh, they'll compress easier and let air out. So it's not like a big balloon. There is a downside to this, because sometimes they fill up with water, and when you shut the door, it squirts water at you. 
This is just a generic, if you look at the cross section, you, we can buy this here in Canada in 100 meter rolls if you want. It's, it's just a generic door sail. And what they did was they, they bonded the top together, you see. So they just cut it, put it in a jig and bonded it together, probably with, with some adhesive. So going back to the history of door sails, what happened? Well, when you had... Come here, come here. When you had just this piece on here, this is upside down, but when you had this piece on here, when you're getting in and out of the car, it was catching all the time. Let me try and get a better idea. Oh, no, because I'm going to be upside down. So, when you were getting in and out of the car, this was rubbing and it would cut, and eventually it would be all drafty in this area, because you know full well when you're jumping in and out of your Defender, you always catch your, uh, your belt. Hook, hooks on your belt holes on your jeans on this bit and they're always getting ripped off so what they did was they came up with a, a cunning plan of putting a piece of form inside the door seal I'm just looking for it now, it's here somewhere that's the top there Where am I? Where is it? there it is so they reinforced this piece with a piece of form and you can used to say, see it inside there look and it and it goes from here, there, there it is, look, there, all the way up to there. So that bit, when it goes on, is reinforced. And this is our problem, ladies and gentlemen, because, look, this bit hardly compresses at all. Now, I'm, a, I'm not a beefy guy, but I'm a fairly strongish guy, and I'm having a hard time compressing that. So I'm going to put a piece at the top of this door, and I'm going to show you some measurements because I've already measured this. And I think my calculations should be correct. The top of the door here, this piece here, is five millimeters. The depth of the door, and uh, let me see. This is looking this way. Let me get my calendar out and I'll show you. It's 2.78 millimeters. This is very hard to do with one hand. But if we measure the depth of there, 2.79, oh, wait a minute, I've got that wrong, oh, wait a minute. 2.87, well, it, it, it fluctuates a bit, but it's around about 20 odd millimeters, 21. This is slightly angled, but like I said, believe me, I've measured it about two, three times, and it was 21.78. The seal thickness, from this back edge here to this front edge here is 19 millimeters uncompressed. This lead, so this, uh, if we take off 21.78 and we take the 5 millimeter off, we're 16.78, and if we take 16.78 off the 19, well, well, let's call that 17, we're left with 2 millimeters thicker than the door. Now, in an ideal world, Two millimetres compression onto this would be perfect. But watch this. So I fitted the seal. Just rough. I, I've just tapped it on with me and I haven't actually hit it, hit, hit it with a mallet yet. And you can see this reinforcement here. All right, you can see that reinforcement. And if I put my caliper on... Whoa, look at that. That's about two millimetres there. It's... You know, it's, it's within calculations. And the same goes for the top here. And that's, I've just looked at that now. You can see I haven't altered anything whatsoever. Um, how am I going to measure that? You can see here, quite clearly, that that is sticking out of the top. And you see? It's sticking out the top. And it's got form in the top corner that is hard my friends that is really hard that is not compressing one bit so watch what happens when we shut the door i haven't done the front bit because it's a waste of time look you can't shut the door <laughs> you see what i'm trying to say this shut nice and flush before without the seal but now look at it holding off and then the customer's saying oh look at that that's a rubbish joint mate what can you do? How can you make the door better? Um, 
although the seal's tight in the top, you know, I, I haven't pushed the seal in there, I've just been messing about with it. But this is it, you, you have to compromise. Do you want the door to fit properly or do you want the seal to fit? To me, the seal like that is, is not bad at all, if you see what I mean. It's doing its job. It's sealing the door, but it's too thick. That's the problem. Uh, it works very, very well. That's, that's, but that cannot compress anymore. Look at that. I cannot compress that any more into there. Even if I push the button, you see how much stress is on that button. When I press that, look. Ooh, wait a minute. It's, it's pushing against it. Now, I didn't fit this piece for a reason. Because I wanted to explain to you what happens to the door, to the seal. You see, when you shut the door like this, this edge of the door is compressing onto the seal pretty much square on. It's working on a radius look. Now what did I do with the old seal? Oh, here it is, isn't it? Um, on the inside of the door, if you can see this, let me lay the foot for a minute. Damn it. Now, on the inside of the door, it pushes, the door pushes against it. And it pushes this way. You can see how the moulding's gone. It's not compressing like the front of the door. It's pushing. This is where the door latch, uh, the, the check strap, et through the, the seal. So this hasn't got much of a chance of shutting at all. It sort of is. But again, look. You can see my finger running along the soft stuff. And then I come across to that form. Same here. You see? So... I hope you get that, because we're fighting a losing battle with these doors. Um, so you can put new seal on after new seal on. And I've had customers wanting me to put genuine seals on, and they're just as bad. So what's the answer? Well, to me, the answer would be to have this lip a little bit in, or a different design of seal that wasn't so thick in these corners. If it was just like this look, perfect. Can you, it's starting to get my drift now. If it was like that, it would be perfect. But you can see with my finger hitting that rubber. And that is not going to compress. Now I can't... Let's take the seal off a minute. Let's get it off. Let's tighten it. I could take a piece of that dum-dum uh, out of the top of here. I wonder if that will help. No. I don't think I can do... I don't think I can do all that much with it. Um, just looking around for a screwdriver. Anyway, I just want to look. Let's have a dig around with this. See if we can take some of that filler out. See if that's going to help. Might do. Let me get back. There is a resounding no. It's still sticking out. You cannot push that in anymore. That's not going to go in. So, you're going to drive around with the Land Rovers, unfortunately, with the doors sticking out. There's nothing really you can do. I mean, I have in the past, and I did it with mine, I actually cut these with a scalpel at the back inside and pulled that piece of foam out. And that's cut, this, this sealed really nice. But let me try and show you what happens without that reinforcement. So without the reinforcement, look what happens to the seal. I've actually moved it up. There's the reinforcement now. It's up here. But it fits exactly the same. You know, I, can't make, I can tap that on. But you see what happens to it? It's terrible. It, it just won't go around that corner. And believe me, I've fitted a lot of these. And you can see here, perhaps I can use a little flashlight. You can see on the inside it fits perfectly. You see? Nothing wrong with that fitting. You know, it's just bad, man. So, you know, if you if you get your Land Rover... See, that, see what I was trying to say earlier about this wearing out when you're getting in and out of your car? So that's why they put the reinforcement in. So we're stuck. I'm sorry, drill holes in the floor. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. But no, if you put these seals in and you're willing to prepare to uh, put up with 
um, a few problems. The door's not f shut in flush. Then that's, I think that's the only way we're going to do it, guys. Because uh, these depths here were set by the old series uh, 2A. If Land Rover had got their act together, it would have been easier for them to use a little bit thinner seal. But they didn't. They were limited by this. They could have moved this bit back a bit, but think of all the engineering you needed to move that piece back. There's, there's just too much. Is there a better answer? I don't know. I was thinking, perhaps, maybe a, 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 a stick-on sponge seal might be just as effective. I don't know. Let me have a look in the marketplace and see what, uh, see what we can find. Because really, on this side, this, the, the seal wants to go on here, on this bit. But on this bit, it needs to go here, because this bit is forced into there. If you see what I mean, it's crushed. So I know I've repeated myself a few times. But that is a problem. But the bottom door seal, that is just atrocious. That's, I don't know what they were thinking there. But uh, and you can see when they've been getting in and out, you see how it's all ripped. So not much we can do with that apart from modernise it. Um, so there we are. There's another problem about seals. Um, if I know this went on a bit long, but if you liked it, uh, subscribe. But you can s subscribe or and click the uh, bell button so you can get some updates. And send me a comment. See what you think. See if you've got a solution. I might be barking up the wrong tree. But as far as I'm concerned, this is sat too far out for the job. And I do believe that this is actually a genuine seal. I didn't, it wasn't in a box, but it looks like a genuine one because it's got these little holes in. Anyway, I could be wrong. Talk to you later.